and this guy was like, really love my girl. She's a stripper, right? She was a stripper, but uh, she kept cheating on him, right? She kept, you know, every time, and it wasn't like, like she was meeting a guy and cheating on him. It would be like she'd hang out and then it'd be like a three chick lesbian fucking hookup or uh, her friend and her boyfriend and uh, the her friend's boyfriend. And, uh, you know, like just was always some kind of funky shit. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have uh, comedian John Fish and we're here to discuss having kids, making adjustments in life, being happy, dealing with moments and and dealing with therapy and stuff. This was a good heavy therapy kind of looking at the trauma that that makes you uh, less of a man and everything else. Uh, don't forget to follow us on uh, Patreon. Sign up for the Patreon, patreon.com, click uh, slash manschool202. Uh, all the fam, all the uh, yeah. fam page, the uh, Instagram, all that stuff. You can check that out at manschool. Also, want a consultation, hit me at domtonero.com. Click on consult. And Harry, you can email me at advice from Harry at gmail.com if you want a consultation, but also uh, over at patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus content for the show. If you like the show and want to uh, support the show and keep listening to extra content, uh, you know, dating tips, a lot of bonus content, including archived episodes of Man School 202, all the episodes starting from episode one when we were the Beige Phillips show. It's all available at patreon.com slash manschool202. All right, let's get it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what up, GYBB? Get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited uh, because this is a special show. Now, I may have said that 600 times before, but this time I really mean it. Mm, um, wow. Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? I'm absolutely ready to rock and roll, Dante. You know me. I'm, I'm living the life. People yeah. people wish they could dream about the things I'm doing. That's it. It is what it is. <laughs> I want to introduce our guest because uh, he's a good friend of mine, and I haven't seen him in so long. I didn't even yeah, know he had babies dude. and shit. But funny, funny dude. Um Give it up for my boy John Fish, y'all. Give it up, John. Guys, good to see ya. What's going on? All these babies are just in the, in the on the, just babies. Yeah. I didn't think you were gonna have babies. Did you want kids or you didn't really want yeah. kids? No, I definitely wanted kids. I mean, I was I was uh I was just so far away from, you know, relationship, yeah. serious relationship. Where'd you but, meet your girl? Uh, Where'd you meet your, your lady wife? Hinge. And hinge, really? Hinge, yeah, yeah. Here's uh, this is something that um, because I think you had like a you. In my opinion, standing off is you had what I call the, the Lenny Marcus syndrome, right? <laughs> a guy who is. This is gonna be great, John. By the way, this is gonna no, be it great is, when it, it starts is, off it that is. way. It, it <laughs> is. Here's the, here's the thing: a guy who is is a good dude, um has some of the best qualities that a human being can have, but because those qualities are not always uh, celebrated, a lot of times we don't understand what our value is in the context of that. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you get taken advantage of. I, I, yeah, it wasn't yeah. that, that for me, and, and I'm I'm friends with Lenny too, and I, you know, we were always sort of, you know, side by side, single, and you know, getting into these relationships. I mine was a little, my stuff was different because I ended up going to a therapist. I mean, I've been to therapy through uh, a bunch for different things, but I re- I remember going to a therapist um, specifically to to talk about relationships you know, and stuff. My work, at. yeah. Okay. And mine was like, I would say, and and also a healer. Okay. I, I went, you know, I wasn't seeking out a healer, but do you know Jessica Brodkin? No, I've, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, her name. she's well, she's an interesting dude because she uh, she was a CIA agent, as she will okay. say, the not the non sexy kind. She was at a desk, but she was a CIA agent, uh-huh. and then and then a stand up comedian, or then a healer, and then a stand up comedian. Okay. I might have gotten the last two. So, and she was a friend, and and uh, and uh, and I went to her, and I talked to a therapist, and, and mine was really two those two things. The the therapist helped me realize that I was just pretty blocked about thinking that 
I didn't make enough money to support a family. Right. And that's where, that's where my worth, like mm -hmm. in my mind, I, okay. I, you know, I, I felt, and, uh, and I remember saying that to my, my, my now partner, cause we are not technically married. We're okay. still engaged. Yeah, when I you're say all in wife, on my friend. I'm, I'm all, all in. <laughs> I, I just say, uh, my wife, I call her my wife, but, uh, mm. I say, we'll get married. I, we want to have a wedding, but she wants to have a drink at her wedding and I keep knocking her up. So no, no, but we have two. We oh, have right. two. Wow. Yeah, 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 we just yeah. So oh, you don't uh, know when we would talk about this. Uh, good, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I remember telling her like when we were getting serious, you know, after the I love yous and stuff, and I was like, you know, I, I just, you know, I feel, you know, a little inadequate because I don't make a lot of money. And I remember her telling me like, you know, I'll never, you know, I'll never leave you or think of less of you if you don't make a ton of money. And it sort of you know, money's been an issue. It mm -hmm. has, but like that ha comforted me at that yeah. time and helped me. And then also, you know, I, I have friends, Moody McCarthy, he, mm. he married a civilian, like a person yeah. that I, I wouldn't, you know, he got like a, a, a he got with a, a quality woman that, you know, yeah. it's hard to this. It's, it's like that journey song, like, yeah. loving a, you know, the, the, the rock star or whatever the traveling man is it's yeah, not yeah. easy for women yeah, yeah. and then and then jessica helped me because i wondered if there was something going on in here blocking me and she was like no you don't have any like trauma or blocks or anything that are keeping you now it's when you say pure. healer like well, how do you mean that like um, she I'm... is a reiki healer okay okay yeah yeah. And what does that? I'm not. I mean, I kind of know what it is, but I, I, I. Uh... Me too, and I've been. Uh... Okay, all right. So this is just. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a lot of like you know energy stuff. Ener I think she would might even call herself an energy healer. Uh, okay. More than. And a, so she didn't feel like you had any any blocks and stuff. It no, was I just... didn't have any like trauma sh stuff or memories or things that were like you know it was literally just me blocking me. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. not thinking you were worthy. Yeah. Of it. It's it's you know what's funny about that is because I um so I, you know I do these consultations and stuff and I mean I like I'm probably I'm the one that kind of got Lenny with his you know with his girl I don't know if he ever told you whatever the fuck I remember you telling me about yeah, it yeah. yeah like after he yeah. was on yeah um, and I actually I I remember like you know being around for that courtship and you know yeah, and I'm yeah. friendly yeah. with his wife and stuff so it was it yeah. was good to see. And 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 the thing was that I I uh so a lot of times that we we are kind of we are going this is what's valuable to me, and so it must be valuable to everybody else. Like we don't we we are so and so like the the, the principles of the podcast is always has always been authenticity, credibility, and empathy. And empathy is to understand that other people are going through stuff that you may not understand. But it's also on the empathy is also a lack of that empathy makes you arrogant to think that just because you think something is important that of course they think that way it's like all common it's it's just common sense but common sense ain't common because we have different experiences i mean i remember consulting a guy um because i you know i get consultations from all over the dude in puerto rico and he kind of and there was this older woman who kind of liked him and she was kind of flirty with him and then and then she got to the point oh hello hello how and she was just real latino and She's kissing him on the cheek and giving him a hug every time he she's coming to Walmart for for thread, you know, just anything. And then he goes, yo, I think I'm going to ask her out. I go, you absolutely should. And then he says, but I, I don't want to ask her out because I don't have a car. I go in no time that you've been flirting with this woman has she ever mentioned the car she's walked into the work. She you 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 walk all she is interested is in you. The assumption might be that she's a she, she you have a car, but if you don't and somebody dumps you because you don't have a car, that's probably not a woman who you want to be with in the first place. And so I think we put this we put this value on stuff and then we just assume that everybody is as shallow as, as we are. <laughs> so it's like you're like, I don't make enough money, and she's like you know, if I get a great guy who she might be like, if I get a great guy who's a great father and loves me and 
loves my kids, man, I'm I'm good. I'll do whatever I have to do. Um, I do kind of feel like it is not. Uh, and I know you, you get in trouble for this, but I'm always in trouble anyway. But but the, it's not you never I've never heard of somebody say she's a woman of her word. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a principle that as a man, you're supposed to be a man of your word. But right. I, I think we give this kind of this kind of breath and space for women to be fickle and be emotional and and I think a lot of times when and I don't think that women are any different than that. I mean, it's just like when women uh, when when women say all men cheat, I think they give us that space to be, you know, to 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 be for, for, give us space for infidelity. And I think what we do is we take advantage of the space that we that that we get. So. Um, I, you know, and and I and I think, um, and I, I think you would be agree with this because we've been uh, all of us have been around. We've all been famous adjacent, you know, like we know people who are getting it, who have that success, who has household names, and a lot of them are not happy. Like the money didn't fix it. The you know, I, I say this all the time, and I mean, I love Chappelle's work, but I've never seen Chappelle hang out and not do a liter of vodka. I mean, a mm -hmm. tequila. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of tequila. And and <laughs> and I don't care who you are and how much money you got, but that that is self-medicating. You know, that's mm -hmm. a, and, and so there's something wrong with it. I, you know, I, I would say Kirk, Kirk Cobain changed the face, the face of rock music and then blew his brains out. So yeah. I think we have to look a little deeper at what's important. And, and it's, it's funny you should say that because I, I just I had I did a show this weekend with a dude that I used to travel a lot with and haven't seen in like, I don't know, 10 years. Josh Need. Did you ever come across? Yeah, Josh yeah, Need? Just, yeah, yeah. great dude. Josh and like he, you know, he was a big, you know, traveling comic. And then, mm. you know, his his we were talking and his, you know, his father had passed. He had done last comic standing and um, and he had he was like four months from meeting his now wife. And he just kind of like was reassessing things and trying to figure out what's important. And because I'm kind of going through the beginnings of what he was at, where mm -hmm. he was like, I want to be, you know, so he started he had a family and he kind of put comedy on the, on back, the back burner right? not totally like he still right, did he still it worked. It, wasn't, yeah, yeah. it wasn't you know like yeah. there's been you know for 20 years i would say i like lived breathed slept comedy you know yeah. and yeah. and 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 i would say you know our my uh situation with with having a kid actually came right with the pandemic so i was like forced to mm -hmm. slow down right. um and then after we had another kid and we didn't plan either one by the way right, right um so i've sort of been welcomely forced to take yeah, I to, get you. to put it on the back burner um I get you. and so we were just talking about that and it, it and it and it, you know and i've talked to other parents and stuff because yeah. it's assumed you know if you're a woman that's yeah. fine yeah you'll go do yeah. that but as a guy right. you're it's not assumed that you're gonna do that right and right, right. i took a real step back from traveling and going from you know, doing sets five, six nights a week to like three, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, and it's yeah. been a it's been an adjustment. Let's, let's also be honest. It's, I mean, you did it for 20 years. How 20 how many years. years you got in now? I would say 25 now. 25. Yeah. So, I mean, you, there there is also a situation where you don't have to just get up on stage to get up on stage. It's like the, yes. there's a skill set and you can get on stage when you need to work on something and you can turn it up to five if you're working on a special or there's some stuff you're working on, but you don't, there's no need to do it every single day of every day, sure. you know, like a couple there of times. There is like a, an interesting balance because it yeah. is, I do notice like, because right after we had the boy, um, I, I like took like, paternity leave and i'm putting that in quotes um mm -hmm. cuz you know i wasn't getting any paternity it's leave union. <laughs> right yeah, yeah. It's just right, right, right. Not like i'm going to go what we yeah. call hang out with my little dude yeah. leave right yeah because and then i was America. going to yeah. do uh i was going to get back on the road with louie uh -huh. i was going to go with louie and then my wife got uh covid so i had to cancel mm -hmm. and 
that was going to be like my first days back in like six weeks at least mm-hmm. right um and uh maybe longer and uh and so we canceled well i canceled yeah. okay. and then he was like hey you want to do msg will you be ready to do msg with me and that was like the next week or two weeks and i was like i'll get ready but i and right, i right. <laughs> you know so i called around and got some sets and i remember going in for it, it, this was basically like on a monday mm-hmm. a, that I was going to start getting the rust off for yeah. a Saturday night show. And yeah. I went on Monday and I only had one set and I was like, and I felt rusty and I, I yeah, spent yeah. the next 24 hours nervous, but luckily the next night I had two sets. And by He's the end of those, right I was like, again. I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, but I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, shit, how long is, cause I'd never taken six weeks off, you know? Yeah. 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 I, so, I don't, but yeah, don't, there is a balance. I don't think I had more than two weeks off until the pandemic. Yeah. Like I, I don't think I ever took more than two weeks off yeah. until the pandemic, and it's just, and it was you know. different rules too. Like different. Yeah. I mean, Harry, I saw you at that, at that um, With outdoor the diner? show. The diner. I saw Harry at the diner. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a couple. Of a nog put together. You know, yeah, and yeah, like I did that. Those were all. Di- it was different, different vibes, yeah, yeah, yeah. different rules. You know. Yeah. yeah I remember yeah. like Figuring coming back from when it was like there was a whole energy after the pandemic like everyone was excited just to be out and it was yeah. full of grace and stuff but then after yeah. a certain moment that was taken away and people were like yeah i don't care how like give it to us you know and i and yeah, yeah. it it shipped but like right when it was during the pandemic and right after there was like a cool energy with shows yeah. i think big excitement people were just yeah, excited. They were yeah we, we appreciated it, it more it had been appreciative. taken away from them yeah yeah and that yeah. has and i think away. the audiences were appreciative too i did a I was working no, with New I mean, York Comedy. Is. Yeah, yeah I, I was working with New York Comedy Club. One day it was twelve degrees out, and we were yeah. on the roof. On yeah. I don't know if you ever did that with, with Amelia yeah. with, on the roof. Yeah, yeah. Twelve degrees. People had blankets and and sleeping bags and heaters and extension cords, and they were like, and it was they were socially distanced, and they were yep. out there. They were for yep. it too. Sure, sure. So it just it it was an interesting thing, but I mean I totally get what you're saying because uh, you know comedy is kind of like it's boxing, like you just don't show yeah. up for the fight. You you right. got to train. Yeah. Um, and how goes, long you've been like, in and how long you've been doing it is how long how far you get away from being ready to rock. But I'm sorry, Harry. No, uh, going back to what John was talking about, the appreciation that the audience has had, and it kind of coincides with what you were talking about the fame thing. The problem with like fame and success is people get enamored with it, but they lose any appreciation for it. And when things get taken away or your perspective changes, you start to appreciate different things about your life. I would assume, John, is there something that you appreciate a little differently as you're going through this process or having kids or doing therapy? Is there something that you see a little bit different? Um. Well, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I don't know if this is exactly what you're asking, but there is a real, like, I've never, um, I remember, you know, you get offered a gig in the past and it's like, is that worth it for me? Yes, I'll go do it. And mm-hmm. now there's that extra thing of like, is that worth not being with my kids and my family mm-hmm. to go do, you know, is that, yeah. you yeah. know, is that worth that time? Yeah. Well, the time becomes more precious. The time, because, so uh, the time yeah. is now factored in, as opposed to just like, is that financially worth it for me to go do that? And yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, um, you know, because it, it it can seem repetitive and and stuff. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna read stories to my kid and you know feed the bottle and blah 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 blah. But like, it's precious, you know. Like we we like cry, we cried a little bit this morning when we dropped our boy off for his first day of day. Oh yeah. Like, we're gonna miss him during the day, you know. It's yeah, like, yeah. But like, that's that's what I'm doing now is like, you know, getting back to a little bit more of my life. I've, you know, which, yeah, you know, it would be cool if I didn't have to, but I do, and then I think, you know, it'll keep me more well rounded, and I'll enjoy my time with them even more. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. dope. I I think um, I was listening to what's the guy the the poker player uh, Dan Belzerian. You know mm-hmm. this guy? No. Uh, so he's like a poker player. He's like rich. Harry, I'm going to send you the clip. I- I'm not sure if this is it, but I mean, I don't even know if we're going to play it. But uh, the um, Fine. what I-, I just sent it to you in the chat. Um, what's interesting, he was talking about how 
happiness. He's talking about happiness and and uh, and this kind of level of fulfillment. And what he's saying is that that you know, um, basically said, you know, uh, I have the, he wanna, can't. Yeah, you, pull it you got it. Yeah, yeah. We can you hit it. It's like a two minute, three minute. Yeah, yeah. on Let's happiness. Yeah. Happier as a human being or not blatantly flaunting excess has made you any happier as a human being or if you need to outdo yourself has only contributed to being insecure um well the one thing about spending a lot of money is and and doing a lot of like pleasure buying is that it just ups that bar so in order to kind of like you know, when I got out of the military, for instance, going to Outback Steakhouse was like a 10, right? So now I, ca I can't get to a 10 anymore. If I go to the best restaurant in the world, I'm like at a six. So I can't really like buy pleasure too much anymore. And that's why I think a lot of people say that, you know, being rich makes you unhappy is because before, like if you're a poor guy, you can buy happiness for sure. Like if, any, if I buy any poor guy a Lamborghini, he's gonna be fucking happy. You know what I'm saying? If I take him to the nicest restaurant in the world, sure. he's gonna be happy. For me, I'm just like, whatever, those things don't raise the bar. Are so. you generous with your friends? Um, yeah, I'm more generous with poor people, but yeah. You're not cheap. Definitely not cheap. Aaron Barlow, do you ever just yeah. want to settle okay. down? So that's the clip. Wait, here's, here's um, the thing. So sometimes. He, he says, first of all, he looks like Julian Endelman. Yes, he does. He does. <laughs> so one of the things he says is he the other clip that I saw, he said, you know, it's like a Percocet. Like you take a Percocet, you feel good. Then you got to take two. Then you got to do. He goes, then I buy a Lamborghini. He goes, I put 100 miles on it and then I, and then I sell, sell and then I'm selling it. He says, so I can't I get to the point where that bar keeps growing and growing and growing, where it doesn't affect me, where the things that really matter, hanging out with your friends, the things. And then he says, the things that don't cost money are the things that you cherish more and they never lose, they never lose, uh, Their they value. never lose that, the value, no matter. So you like this, this whole moment of, um, you know, taking your little dude, you know, to school. I mean, this is a moment that you'll have and you'll never not have that moment. And, 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 and here's the crazy thing. You will never have it again. At least you'll never have that first moment again. And it's gone and missing it or not missing it is, yeah. it means everything. And it's, it's yeah. a constant change and it's a constant drive. Sure. To, 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 yeah. To, that I, you... There was a clip. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, 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 no. Go. There was a clip going around with Chrissy D on somebody's podcast. I think it might have been Bert's podcast. Oh, yeah. He's talking about, about the stuff that he yeah. missed. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, he was like, yeah, I made a lot of money these last couple of years, but I missed a lot of stuff with my yeah. daughter. And He's... is it worth it? You know? Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, you know, it's, you're making enough money to give your daughter, you know, your kids. Right. She can go to swim what lessons. they need. Yeah. yeah. But you didn't see it. So right. where is the, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a hard balance. And then you wonder, I mean, I was in a position like I mean, I I, I mean, my first job was 53 and I was like, you know, I, I mean, how many fur coats am I going to have? You know, how many? <laughs> I mean, it's 115 alligator shoes. And then I'm going, well, what am I doing? And and then and uh, it's funny because, uh, you know, my son, you know, he he, he like his his. His mom is a bit of a hippie, so she she does a lot of like thrift stuff. So he had to get his uniform for school, and she got these. She 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 like like they, they in the school they pass the clothes down like you can buy clothes yeah. so that you because they grow so fast, which is cool. But um, you know, he had a he had these ankle boots, and they had white laces, and I I I. You know, I just bought I spent the whole day trying to figure out how many how long are children's boots and so yeah. I can get him some black laces. And it was just <laughs> my whole day was this was finding black laces that yeah. would be not too long and not too long. And I'm Googling yeah. how many eye holes. To, you know what I'm saying? This is my yeah. whole day. Basically replaced your addiction of, of buying fur coats with kids with clothing. Laces. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the and same he, thing you would be doing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just it's way cheaper though. He's way oh, yeah, cheaper. Yeah. He loves rubber ducks, right? He loves a rubber duck, and it's weird. But so then, uh, he went to some thrift mall and found a a rubber duck, a ladybug rubber duck. So it's a rubber duck, but it's it's got a duck bill, but it's red and black, and it's and he loves this ladybug. Duck. So now he's got a cow, he's got a sheep. 
He's got a a, a T Rex rubber duck. He's got a, a unicorn. You Dude, know what I mean? It, it, there is a store in Cape Cod. Mm. Uh, Chatham is the town. Yeah. Okay, rubber duck store. Right, just all rubber ducks. I mean, every rubber duck, duck was she's over it, but our daughter she was really into the rubber duck. Yet for that was her first word was yeah, duck. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, and they have oh, it's just and they have these like um, you know, bigger ones. Oh that wow! They'll put a uh, a, a sailor cap on it with okay. their kid's name on it, and if they oh, don't wow. have cool. your kid's name there, they'll yeah. embroider it in the back in like wow. ten minutes if the person's there. It's crazy. Yeah, so she's That's got crazy. one of those. Yeah, you got to check that out. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was a time he was in the whales, like plastic whale. I was yeah. just sending him. Like, he's got every whale, and he knows the names and yeah. stuff. It's but it's so just funny. you know, the, but the you understand that the giving is more important than the than the giving giving some giving him doing it for him the sacrifice you make for him is just is just so much more fulfilling it just it's non-stop non-stop and you just it's it's something that you um i'm trying to get harry to step it up and stop yeah, playing know, know, but he keeps I talking know. about uh, he's grumpy <laughs> how old are you harry i'm 40 now Okay, I'm forty. So it's uh, yeah. yeah. So it's it's about that time. But I, yeah, I know it's a it's a tough thing. I mean, it's just financially not the right place. I get that. I know that you literally talked about that. But yeah, then also, there's no not, and there's not with you in mind, Harry. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah, no, I know. There I know. and there's nothing. And I was, you know, and like I don't know if it's Arrested Development of New York City or comedians, but like there's so many of us that have have the kids late, and there, you know. It's mm. it's. I think uh, it is arrested development. It's finding the right person, also, and at the and at, at the same time, for me, it's also. Uh, I I know when you have a kid, that becomes the whole world for for better or, for better or worse. Like, and I I have other things I deal with, like ADD and stuff, that makes it difficult just to get through the day. I I don't know if I can do it with kids. Because yeah. Because I you well, know I I can barely do it within the confines of a relationship in my family, who it's are like I deal with OCD and. Mm. You, it, you have it you really, bad. I am, you know, I, I went to therapy for a long time for it, and mm. um, was in a better place. And um, a lot of it was relationship based, which I have, uh, I feel like I have conquered that to stay in the relationship. But I have got other smaller issues that my mm. wife is like she call. I I used to go to group, and it, it was mm. a, a OCD center, but she calls it school. She's like, I, like once a month, she'll be like, you need to go back to OCD school. <laughs> what was but your thing say, what was the thing that would ah, uh, so many things but i just wanted to say quickly to harry it's like yeah, yeah you, you you know like finances with that stuff you have a kid and it's like well you find the focus for that you know like it, it it's like the ocd you don't have time to think about that yeah sometimes so your brain can really focus if it needs so it actually to. helped you it does help yeah yeah but uh my ocd i had like not like um necessarily like a germ thing but what 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 my therapist called the icks like icky like yeah, I, yeah. I, I i like i wouldn't want to put my backpack down on the ground i wouldn't put yeah. my backpack in the locker at a gym i would take an extra towel out at the front desk to put mm -hmm. my bag down in the locker right that kind of thing like um so I so I had a lot of that and uh and the, but then I had a lot of relationship, what they called relationship substantiation, and it was sort of like a grander version of what like kind of was funny on Seinfeld, where he like made little things bigger, like he broke up with someone because they had man hands or whatever like that, mm -hmm. you know. Right, right. And it was like that. It was I would I would um make incidental issues huge uh deal breakers yeah yeah you know yeah. what's the, and, what's the uh, weirdest one or the one that stands out the most the, uh, oh, the ones that my yeah. my uh parents always made fun of me because i i you know before i realized what i was doing like i would be like hey uh, <laughs> this girl had tiny teeth i was like i'm out <laughs> <laughs> tiny teeth is weird she got tiny teeth she got tiny teeth you know yeah. but they probably weren't that tiny but it, it would be it would literally be stuff like you know like um i remember i had a girlfriend who like we were going to meet for coffee and mm -hmm. she was an art uh, in like the creative world too. So we were both going to like kind of work and do coffee shop stuff. And mm -hmm. I was, I needed the paper and I had already done the post and the times. And I was like, I need the, you know, the daily news or whatever it was. And, and, and she came with the post and I'm like, if this woman can't get, if she's not going to 
take my art seriously and got me the wrong thing. How can I be with this woman? Kind of right, that right. kind of shit. Now, were that, you like, looking for you. this out or or just it was just kind of that was just your thinking at the time? It was my thinking at the time. And I didn't know. Okay. I didn't know. I actually went into therapy for uh, th- that. That girlfriend was like, you need to go to therapy or we have to break up kind of thing. And then that mm-hmm. therapist that I t- was talking to after about a year, she was like, I think you have OCD and I, and, and I suggest you go in to check out this OCD center. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then during this breakup, I was kind of dealing with coming to grips and f- kind of being made aware of what was happening to me. It was It's this thing mm-hmm. where like you make these little things, the deal breaker, and then you break up and then you make it, 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 it your brain instantly flips to what have I done? That was the most perfect woman in the world for me. I need her back. Oh, it and, becomes and the opposite. It, it just flips. flips. And then yeah. I was just miserable until we and then get back together. And it's like, ah, I think we got back together too soon. Mm. You know, she had sex with three people. She told me I only had sex with two people. I need to have sex with <laughs> somebody like just crazy shit. <laughs> Brain yeah, going yeah. crazy. Well, you yeah, do have yeah. to do it in threes. I mean, that's part of yes, the OCD. Yeah, that I mean, is certainly part of the OCD. <laughs> That's what you yeah, should have explained. If you say that, her. I have sh- I had shit like little crazy stuff like that. Like I would go into a store to get like a, a Gatorade and I wouldn't take the first one because everybody touches the first one. And then I wouldn't take the second one because that's not my number. I had to go back to the third one, like that kind of thing. And then mm-hmm. the therapy would be you go in and you take the first one and you leave and you sit with that anxiety. Now you that know. doesn't come from any trauma. That's not trauma. No, it's stem, not stem trauma from. related. Um you know it's 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 a brain thing you know it's a brain mm. thing yeah just and, the, you know it's, it's, it's interesting different. that you say that like it, it, my my wife seems to think that it has something to do with the way i was brought brought up with like overbearing jewish parents like okay. making decisions for me um but um they would have you know that that's not what i was led to believe but i am open to exploring that more yeah. Well, it, yeah. it's a weird thing because, it, it, you know, I've been doing these consultations for about six years now. And what I find it, it 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 is always super related to that in some shape or form, because I, I think that mentally we we connect things together subconsciously. So um, I, I've, I've told this story a couple of times, but I had a, I did a couple's uh consultation like several consultation this guy was like really love my girl she's 26 i'm 29 uh but she's she's a, a she's a stripper right she was a stripper but uh she kept cheating on him right she kept you know every time and it wasn't like like she was meeting a guy and cheating on him it would be like she'd hang out and then it'd be like a three chick lesbian fucking hookup or uh, her friend and her boyfriend and uh, the her friend's boyfriend. And, uh, you know, like just was always some kind of funky shit. And it just something so typical for me, which it would just recognize me because I dealt with kind of stuff like this before. And I, the first thing I asked her was, was, uh, you know, had she been molested? And she said, yes. And I was like, who was it? She goes, her father. Then she goes, I go, for how many? She said, from the time I was 10 till I was 16. And 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 what happens a lot of times in those situations, you know, it's almost like a a, a uh, serial killer profile. Like you, you get this behavior and then it always runs back to the same thing. And so, you know, you as a 10-year-old girl who is not even supposed to know about sex, is, uh, you know, has this intimate moment with somebody who's supposed to keep you safe. And so the intimacy gets gets clogged or gets, you know, sh- overshadowed with sex. And so, you know, now you're 10 years old and you're trying to figure out how to survive emotionally because this is so devastating that you can't, you, you don't even feel like you can survive. So you come up with a solution, like this is a math problem that you're figuring out at 10 years old with really very little social social experience anyway. And so what will happen when there's a woman will become super promiscuous because it's a way of, so the way I, I try to explain is like, if you have a, if you got an eyedropper full of arsenic and I hold your head up and I put it under your tongue, you will die. Right. 
But if I take that eyedropper full of arsenic and I drop it in a in a baby pool and you drink the water from the baby pool, you dilute it. And so the more sex she had, the more meaningless sex she had, the it, it, it always diluted the intimacy. And so she was able. So she was literally fucking trying to dilute the toxic, uh, the poison. Mm. And so and, and then every time she would feel she was in love with this dude, but every time she would feel this level of intimacy, it would trigger her. And then she would just, you know, start diluting this like it's not the same. It's not it's it's these two things. And so I think a lot of times when you the, the minute that somebody can go that you can go, yeah, that's it. I think it makes it at least, you know, that what's triggering you and the, and this behavior is not so foreign to you that you're just reacting to things. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I find a lot of times guys will, guys will marry their, they'll marry their, their mother, mm -hmm. you know, their mother's overbearing. They might, may marry somebody that nitpicks them and does, tells them that they're, you know, whatever it is that, and, and you get that over you're used to as a human being. And you oh, also sure. connect that with love. Like you connect right. that as appropriate behavior for somebody who loves you. Even and though you don't somebody like that, it. If somebody's yeah. not picking at you, it, they don't love me because this is what this is. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then as you, you grow older, like, so this girl is, you know, the girl was like 26 now and it's not like now she's had more social experiences and she has, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure she wasn't the best at, at, at social dynamics, but she knows that this behavior doesn't resolve this. It doesn't dilute the image, it just created more problems, but she never reassessed the problem at 26 to say, well, right. well I've been handling it this way. Maybe Were I should handle it differently. to get through that. Um, yeah, yeah, she was like once. Oh, that's good. Once I once I pointed out that this was a reaction, and she could kind of recognize um, what the reaction is. I, I mean, I think the feeling was still there, but then it was like you. Um, she knows that she's being triggered by this, and then I I also have this thing. Uh, a lot of stuff. It's it's a lot of stuff that I will do that ends up being like I'll read some kind of psychology book or something, and it'll be like pretty clinical treatment so um i would like every time you um every time you're gonna cheat on him i would go uh you have to do something absurd like i would give her something absurd like you could say armadillo 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 i want you to jump up three times touch the floor and then spin around right mm -hmm. <laughs> snap your hands snap your fingers twice and she was like why would i do that i go it doesn't matter she goes it's crazy i go exactly but it's the thing that breaks the pattern you know mm -hmm. when she would feel this this anxiety she go armadillo armadillo jump up touch the ground uh spin around and snap twice and then it's just absurd and then uh even and i would say well what if i'm in the crowd i absolutely do it when it is when you're in a crowd because mm -hmm. The absurdness makes somebody go, what are you doing? And you go, well, it's just a thing that I do, you know, when I feel triggered or something. <laughs> when I'm about to go fuck 10 people. <laughs> right, right. But, yeah, I mean, you don't have to <laughs> exactly say that. But I mean, yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah, it's like and then it, it gives you it brings you back to this kind of conscious thinking where you can mm -hmm. make a conscious decision yep. instead of instead of making these decisions impulsively. And I think so often we we are acting impulsively. Um, based on the fact that we're triggered from something else and we haven't even figured yeah. out what it is. And then... Was, go ahead. No, go. Have you read Getting the Love You Want? No, I've never read that. That was I'll a check. book that this reminded or even what, what yeah. Harry was saying. I, you know, I haven't even finished it. I started mm. reading it. It is very um, textbooky. So I'm, I'm sort yeah. of going to different books and coming well, back to it. It's like a hard it read. Talk, it's yeah. a difficult read. Yeah, yeah. But it's talking about, you know, how things are from your childhood and like, you know, a lot of our relationship stuff is based in, yeah. in you know, the, our relationships with our parents. Yeah. Yeah. And then the abuse, you know, if you're if you come from an abusive kind of parent and I, I mean, an abuse comes in, it could come. Abuse could be neglect. Abuse could be overbearing. Abuse could be outright abuse. It, it comes in a lot of forms. And then what we're doing is we, we're, we're triggered by that. And because we're so accustomed to it, it feels like it feels like love because it's what we're accustomed to. And when somebody treats you in a way that is contrary to that, that feels 
wrong almost like somebody's treating me good and respecting me and i and i feel like you know i have no self-esteem at all and i'm like you i'm accustomed to my mom saying you know you ain't shit you ain't gonna be nothing you and then you get somebody who says no you're great you're great and you're like Ugh, what's wrong with you <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you i'm garbage <laughs> and and amadillo 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 you know and then yeah. you, you go through this thing where you can you can uh really kind of fix these things mm -hmm. um the other thing is i think that a lot of times we we're not always trying to be the best version of ourselves like we we're we're kind of half ass in our own kind of personal development and then we're like i was saying before like it's it's you know it's like a garage sale you know oh this is worth something Let, let's see let's see what we could get for this you know what do you think is it I had 150. I, I, you know, the guy comes in and goes, Can I, I'll, I'll buy it for 35. You go, all right, 35, I guess. I was going to throw it away anyway. <laughs> you know, so there's this, this kind of sliding idea of what the value is when when you, um, for instance, it's it, it's sort of like you're talking about when you, you know, like comedy is not the main priority, your son and the time. So you go, listen, uh, you know, if it's a Roger Paul gig, right mm -hmm. and you, <laughs> shout out to roger <laughs> and you got to do six hour drive to middle with no hotel room and uh we're gonna give me i'm gonna give you 150 but you guys just gotta <laughs> split it you go yeah i'm, I'm not doing that uh, i'm not doing that because you, you gotta grab the next three headliners there too <laughs> even when you're not working just kidding right. roger <laughs> not really though not really <laughs> not really but it's uh <laughs> i'm just you know, kidding a, but don't don't call me don't call yeah. me. <laughs> ever, ever. Uh, you know what I always loved about Roger when I first that, moved to the city? He'd be actually, like, Actually, no, I don't know what you loved about Roger. <laughs> Nothing, but go ahead, tell me. He'd go, uh, Call me late. Call me late on Thursday. I'd be like, All right. So I'd call him at like nine or something. He's like, No, 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 no. call me later. I'd call him at 11. He's like, No, 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 call me late. Call me like in the morning at like 2 a.m. And I'm like, <laughs> All right. And then I finally call him at 2 a.m. He's like, All right, I'll give you the date. <laughs> he worked yeah. late. He worked late. He's always he's always, he's always wear that Koshak hat. That hat. Remember Koshak? Yeah. <laughs> the Mike Harry, you don't you look at the baffle. You don't remember Koshak? The monster hunter? Uh no, I don't know that one. Pull, on. pull that up. Yeah, pull that <laughs> the vampire up. hunter? What is that? Is that he was no. a he, it was monster. He's a hot hunt monster. He was like a uh he was like a journalist or something, and he would be taking pictures of monsters and shit. It was old, old uh 80s 90s but you, you know you start to decide what your value is and what you're willing to take and, and what's important to you but I, I think a lot of times we don't you know as adults uh, but here well here's the thing about you can't even do that unless you've been doing comedy to the point where you're so proficient about it that you understand what the value is to what you do uh so it's like you you put 25 years in comedy and somebody's trying to pay you you know, shout out to Roger again, $50 for a six hour trip and, and you got to pick up the headliner. Um, it's you You go. No, I'm not because you have a, a real sense of what your worth is. Whereas I think a lot of times people don't really have the sense of what their worth is in in regular life, like mm -hmm. like you, your friendship, you know, your, your loyalty as a friendship or your kindness or your generosity or you, you know, as a, as a lot of dudes, I mean, and you're one of those dudes is always a kind dude, never, never a problem, never, you know what I mean? Like he was always a, 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 a good dude. And, but um, I feel like, you know, if, if that's how you are, it's how you are. And so you don't know how to be, you don't know how to be anybody else. Like, right. You don't know how to be Tracy Morgan. You know, it's just you don't have that in you, you know. Um, so so it's 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 but because it comes easy for you, you don't value it in the way that it is valuable. Because if you if you think about if you go in on if you try to count the people in that you know and how many of them are a honest, b loyal and credible, and c empathetic to what other people are going through. That 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 list is really short to have those three things and be be emotionally have the emotional acuity to kind of practice those things and know what the value is. And so, you know, comedy is a thing that we we do so frequently that 
and for so long and so consistently, we know what the value is in that. But just being and being a kind person is almost like it's worth nothing. And so we give it away with the with the frivolous. Well, I got plenty of this. I got plenty of kindness. I got plenty of and 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 I think um, we tell people what our value is, whether we realize it or not. You know, you you meet a girl. You're talking to her. How does she know what your value is? You tell her. Now, you don't go, hey, I'm worth a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And you don't want to be the guy that goes, my other car is a, is a Porsche. Yeah. You don't want to be that. But just, it literally... Um, my other car is a bigger Hyundai. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hybrid, right? Uh, <laughs> but it's, you know, you go in a situation where you, you're literally going... Um, these things that are valuable, are va- they're valuable to me because they're valued to me in my own friendships. And yet somehow I I give that to people and it means nothing to me. I give it away with, with, with you know, w- just with no standards. Just, just And everybody doesn't deserve your time and everybody doesn't deserve your kindness and, and, and so on. And you give it away so frequently because you're in abundance of it. So if you're not working to be the best version of yourself, I mean, we have a litmus of, of what comedy is worth because we we're in it. We're, you know, we knew when we sucked, you knew when you got proficient, you knew when you were better, you know, when you did artistically did something that was amazing. And then we had people around us to measure that. Whereas when it comes to our own personality and the qualities and the character, we don't, it's just kind of, there's no, there's no uh, metric to that. Yeah. Um, That's funny that you should say that. And then just coming back to what Harry was saying with um, some, some anxieties, like I, I, OCD is like an anxiety disorder. And sometimes I would get offered these gigs and, and I would get anxious because, you know, we're told never say no, never say no. And I would feel like, well, this doesn't seem like I should take that. I remember, you know, and I would, I would, it, it, and and I could do this for somebody else if I wasn't the one in right, it. Right, 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 but right. I would call a friend. I would call Ted Alexandro and be like, "Hey, man, this, 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 and this. What do you think?" Do you think? And, <laughs> yeah, you know, and it always helped to have that. And then it's funny because you, you know, if 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 the situation was situation was reversed, I could see clearly. But since I'm in it, I yeah. couldn't. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it always helps to have that. And yeah. that's what I think that therapist did for me with my own self-worth um, yeah you know r- you, they get to know you they you sh- show them who you are and what you right. want and stuff and they're like well yeah you can do this how long did it take for for your therapist to get it to get I you i think you know it was so weird because it was like i was i was de- i was depressed about something and you know i was out and i didn't want to go back into the city to go back to the therapist that I was seeing at the OCD center. Mm-hmm. And I just, I started doing uh better help and I just got hooked up with this therapist. And I mean, it was within a year. What was better, better help? Is better what, help like is online? just online. Yeah. Right, right. Online. And just, okay. you know, pretty, pretty, um, pretty random yeah. fitting. And, uh, and she was awesome. Um, and, uh, and she just kind of helped me see through all that. And I remember like it just the dating changed the, mm. the, the, the kind of people I was meeting changed and in the kind of questions I would ask. And I, you know, I remember asking my now partner, like, what are you looking for? And mm-hmm. she didn't shy down from answering, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it, it was, we were both at that point where we were, we were now did she mention kids thing. right away or did she what did she what was that yeah answer? i what think i remember you know someone that i can have a conversation with and you know and and i was like yeah at some point you know family and she's like yep and you know we were just it just sort of like all those kind of bigger picture things um neither of us balked at and yeah. and kind of was family i remember her saying on the first date like family is the most important and stuff like that and just just a lot of things you know, big picture stuff. We kind of seemed on the same where we were. We didn't seem we were on the same page and are. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that family is important, but I also think it sucks. But um, let's get into that on the Patreon. <laughs> I guess it depends on the family. <laughs> so, well, it, here's the, here's the thing, and you, I always I brought this up a couple of times, but you know that uh, 
that saying blood is thicker than water. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not the actual saying. I don't what know if you knew it? that. Oh no, what's the actual saying? the actual saying is do you know this, Harry? No, I don't know this one. So the 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 actual saying is the blood of the covenant is stronger than the water of the womb. That's where the saying comes from. And it's been shortened down to to blood is thicker than water, which is interesting because covenant is not necessarily it family. means yeah, the opposite, it means the, the opposite. total opposite of what right what they've done but let's plug your shit and then let's do the rest on the patreon if you want to find out the cliffhanger what it actually means and how it is check us out on patreon.com but first plug your stuff john you, what you, you got anything going on i'm all at jd fish on uh instagram jd f-i-s-c-h because uh, as my grandfather said you can't have the fish without the c I got you, my man. <laughs> Harry, talk. Uh, you could follow my stuff uh, at Harry Turjanian. That's where all my stuff is on uh, Instagram and TikTok, YouTube, everything. And if you need any relationship consultations, you could email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Uh, if you want me, you know, you can give me Google me, bitch. And uh, if you want a consultation, dontenero.com. Click on consult. Don't forget to follow the Patreon at manschool, uh, patreon.com slash man school 202 also the youtube the facebook all the stuff we got everything on everything uh check that out uh gybb gets your balls back wwdd what would dante do um i'll check y'all on the patreon side we are out